All right, so one of my favorite dishes during the winter time is a nice hot chicken pot pie. It brings together everything that you know in chicken soup and wraps it into a warm, crispy, buttery crust. And today we're gonna show you how it goes. Check it out. A shot of Henny, that's a plenty for the chef, yeah. The Jack Daniels, you can feel it in your chest, yeah. In the kitchen, got the mixer, got the spuds. Then I whip them while I'm sipping, cause it's sicker with a buzz, yeah. Ooh, we making bomb ass food. Just one shot won't do. Not tonight, cause if I'm not hungover, then you know it isn't right, yeah. All right, so the first step to making our pie crust for the chicken pot pie is we're gonna make a savory pie crust. So beforehand, when we did our apple pie, we did a sweet pie crust. The only difference is with this is that we're doing an equal amount of salt and sugar. So we're doing one tablespoon each of salt and sugar. We got about three cups of just regular all-purpose flour, and I have our butter in the fridge. You need absolutely cold butter. I'm not going for a frozen butter because um, we're going for like a refrigerator cold butter. It's gonna make it easier to break up the butter into the flour versus it being completely frozen. So we're gonna start with two sticks. I've already cut it up, diced it up, of refrigerator cold butter. You could do salted butter, which is what I chose to do, just because I like the extra salt flavor in there. We're gonna throw that in there. We're gonna also top our salt and our sugar. Mix it all together, use your hands, don't worry about it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break up these little bits of butter here. As you can see, way easier to work with. We're gonna mix these up into pea shape. Really, really small. Very similar to your traditional pie crust. So the goal is to get the butter mixed into the flour in good chunks so when it bakes it remains flaky and crusty when it melts so you want to make sure everything stays cold because we don't want this butter to melt down and get too soft because it'll ruin the entire pie crust so as you can see i already like diced it up pretty small to begin with so it's not really much to have to work with while we're doing that make sure you get a bowl or a measuring cup full of ice water again you need everything super super cold that's gonna make this way, way better, way easier to work with. And it's gonna come out to be a delicious pie crust. Nice flaky, and it's gonna make the pot pie that much better. So we are already just about there. So when I say pea-shaped, this is what I'm talking about. Like literally the shape of a pea. Don't get easier than that. So just keep working that butter into there. It'll work itself out. Now that we're just about there, we're gonna add our water a little bit at a time. So make sure you don't get any ice in there, just straight water, a little bit at a time. That's my oven, it's preheating. Make sure you preheat your oven, that's the real first step. So get that going, a little bit at a time. We're almost there, a little more water. Ice cube fell in, not a big deal. Fish that out, throw it in there. So you want the consistency, as we talked about before, to be like wet sand, like magic sand, if you remember when you were a kid growing up. You can be able to pick it up, crush it, it retains its shape. We still need a little more time there. So almost, we're almost there. Mix it all together. I'm thinking five to six tablespoons of ice cold water and you should be just about there. All right, keep mixing that in, keep working it. And I always found working with your hand is honestly the best. You could cheat with a food, a food processor that would make everything easier. I just don't feel like cleaning that up later. Still need to work this in a little bit better. Butter's still a little too big, that's fine. There we go. So, we're picking it up. As you can see, it's still a little too crumbly, so just add a little bit more water. There we go. Yeah, we're just about there now. If I can pick it up, a little bit on the floor, that's okay. I like to appease our floor gods. See, now we can pick it up and mold it. So now that we're at that stage, get this off my fingers, the excess, don't waste any of it. We're gonna put this aside for just a second, clear some room. We're gonna get some cling wrap or plastic wrap, whatever you wanna call it. Make sure you get yourself a nice, easy workspace, spread it all out. The bigger the surface area, the better. We're gonna spread this out. We're gonna take our pie crust, or flour really, it's not pie crust yet. Put that right on the center there. And we're gonna work it. Like we, just like we did with the apple pie. Bring the edges in, work it in, edge it in there. This is gonna to have to sit 
cooling in the fridge. We're just gonna work it into a more easy workspace. Wrap it all up, flip it over, squish it down into a nice disc. There it is. Let this chill in your fridge for a minimum of 45 minutes to a half an hour. Or half an hour to 45 minutes, reverse that. And it goes. Next, we're gonna work on preparing our vegetables, our root vegetables for the next part. We'll be right back in a moment. I'll wash my hands. Now, when it comes to your mise en place, everything being in place in French, uh, when it comes to your vegetables, you really have a quite a different variety to choose from when it comes to your chicken pot pie. Your mirepoix traditionally uh, is made of both celery, carrots, and onions. I'm gonna add some parsnip to the party because I like the peppery taste of a parsnip. It's kind of like a really strong tasting, like almost like a white carrot. It's a really nice root vegetable that I do enjoy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel this like we would any other vegetable, right? So make sure it's all peeled. Just as easy as peeling a carrot. It's pretty much just a big old white carrot. Just a little more stronger tasting, more aromatic. Kind of like almost like a, uh, like a licorice taste if you want. Just kind of a spicy punch to the face. We're gonna clear all this up. Always have a bowl to pick up your scraps, but don't throw this away. You can always use this for vegetable stock, especially parsnips that'll have like a nice taste to it. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna slice off the root there, cut it in half. Kind of a tough vegetable. Cut that half into slices because we're gonna do a small dice for this. Makes it nice and easy. So line that up, cut these julienne, like matchstick size. There we go. And then we're going to small dice. Super easy, not too bad. Just always watch your fingers. There we go. We got a bowl to collect all these veggies. Parsnips go here. Now again with the other half, slice her down. Nice and easy. It helps if you have a nice sharp knife. But we already talked about the importance of respecting your kitchen, respecting your knife, and you won't get hurt. Again, easy slices. There it is. Kevin, join us friends. So now the rest of it's pretty simple. Discard the rest. We're gonna do mm, maybe about a half an onion. Peel it up. Cut off the one end, keep the root. Again, we're doing small dice. So peel the onion completely. Small slices. Cut her down the middle. Watch your fingers, your little digis. And slice. Take two celery stalks, same thing. We're gonna cut these up, make them look good. Put them on my little trash hole. Then we're gonna cut these up in strands, right down the spittles. There we go, beautiful. Again, small dice. Essentially what we're making when it comes to chicken pot pie is a chicken soup in a pie. So you're gonna take everything you would with your traditional chicken soup beginnings to start the base for your broth. So mirepoix, carrot, celery, onions. It's pretty simple. So we're gonna do maybe, we'll do one carrot. I think that's all we're gonna need. Peel that down. Make sure you peel the carrot. Carrot peelings leave a weird, bitter taste. Tastes funky and strange. So if we don't need it, get rid of it. We're gonna cut the root off. And again, we're going to cut down slices. Oop, watch your hands. One slice. Two slices. 
choice. So I'm gonna take these, and we're gonna make julienne right down the middle, one at a time. There we go. Now I got carrot sticks. Perfect. Take those, and we're gonna do again small dice. Perfect. One last bit. Small dice. Perfect. Now that is me some plus. All of our vegetables are ready. Now, I prefer to do my chicken pot pie. What I'll do is I'll buy a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store just because it's so cheap. It's like five bucks. And I'll personally shred all the chicken out. I'll use that chicken for my chicken pot pie. It saves time, saves money. You don't have to sit there roasting another whole chicken just to make a chicken pot pie. So what I've done actually is I have our rotisserie chicken already shredded. Plus I do enjoy a variety of white and dark meat in my chicken pot pie. I think that adds a whole lot of flavor to it. It's different, it's delicious, and it's really, really easy to make. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to make the filling. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare our vegetables. So we got some three tablespoons of butter ready to go. I know it seems like a lot, but it's necessary, trust me. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the butter, melt it down, we're gonna take some of our chicken that's already cooked, but what we're doing is we're putting it in here just to incorporate the flavor of the chicken with the uh, sauce, a little bone there, don't worry about that. Put that in there. We're just gonna saute this out, get the flavor of the chicken. So, what we're doing now is the chicken is just about ready to take off the heat. We browned it a little bit, we've broken up the pieces into a more like smaller texture, which will be perfect for the pie. So what we're gonna do now, oh, wait, wait, wait. Little bone there, not bueno. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this off the heat into a separate plate, and let that kind of just chill for now. We'll come back to that later. Put the pan back on the heat, take another three tablespoons of butter. I know it seems like a lot, it's okay. Throw that in there. If you wanna eat this, don't worry about losing weight because then go out. All right. Once the butter gets nice and melted, we're gonna start sauteing off our onions. Butter is almost there. Let that kind of just help it along by pulling the pan out, and whisking it around. Take that, we're gonna throw in all of our white onions. We're gonna get this just translucent, not brown, just translucent, not fully cooked, and then we'll add the rest of everything. <coughs> nice sizzle going. You wanna work on moderate, medium to, moderate heat, so medium to high. There we go. There's nothing better, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than the smell of sauteing onions. Brings me back to my childhood. Now, I'm Italian, so we always had onions frying off for no reason. Someone's making meatballs, onions. Someone's making spaghetti, onions. Onions were always going off. There we go. Almost there. It smells so good. Keep stirring it, don't let it sit. If you let it sit, it will burn. Especially when you're cooking in high fat like butter. Okay. That's just about there. So now that that's there, we're gonna add the rest of our remaining root vegetables, celery, onions, and parsnips. I'm sorry, celery, parsnips, and carrots. Let that go. We're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna keep cooking this out until everything gets soft. i would probably say about 10 minutes. So we're at the part now where the vegetables are pretty soft. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some thyme. Thyme and chicken go hand in hand like peanut butter and jelly. What else we're gonna do is we're gonna add some seasoning. My nice little pinch of salt, two pinches because I'm a salty boy. And we're gonna add some fresh cracked black pepper. It's about eh, seven or eight turns. Get that going, make sure it's nice and incorporated. Now what we're gonna do next is, this is at the point where you would add your alcohol. You could add a nice vermouth, you can add a nice dry white wine, uh, anything light and white, but I like bourbon. So we're gonna add about a quarter cup of bourbon. Okay, get that done. All right, cook this out until the alcohol smell wears out. That was a lot of bourbon. 
Oh! No! Oh! There it is! It's a lot of bourbon. Cook it out, Bombe. It's okay. Shake it out until it leaves. There it goes. All that alcohol is going to burn out. We're going to save my ceiling a little bit here. Oh my god, thank god Cassie left. But thank you. <laughs> this, my friends, is why you don't drink and cook. There we go. My god, it is still very hot. Come on. There we go. The alcohol is cooked out. I feel like I'm going through menopause. What we're going to do now is we're going to add four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We're going to make kind of a roux situation here. Get that going. Let that dry through. Once the raw flour smell is gone, which is not yet, but it will be. Almost. We're gonna add in the rest of our chicken. There we go. Oh god. It's all right. A little on the floor. We're good to go. All right. Things are getting pretty thick due to the flour. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stream in some hot chicken stock. This is homemade chicken stock, so a little bit at a time. You don't want to add too much at once because then you'll get clumps. So do that, wait for it to get incorporated. The ceiling looks okay, yeah, we're fine. I'm not getting divorced today. We're gonna add a little more stock. I'm thinking about two, two and a half cups of stock. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. And the rest. There you go. Turn that off. We don't need any more fire either. Now to keep mixing, keep turning, it's gonna thicken up pretty nicely. Keep it rocking. So now we're at the point where the flour has done its job, the roux has started working. So we're gonna add our frozen peas. Because of Popeye, you need to have at least some frozen peas in there. There we go. Mix that together. Gives it a nice color as well. Mix that in. We're gonna reduce the heat. There we go. We're gonna tell them to calm down. Calm down. Calm down. And then we're going to add maybe three-fourths cup of heavy cream. There we go. Just to kind of make it even more thick. Give it a little more body. And then once we emulsify all of this, we have to taste, season, and taste. Very important. There we go. Perfect. We're gonna cook down this heavy cream a little bit. Give this a try. Give this a try. A little more salt, a little more pepper. Okay. Now that this is cooked, we're gonna put this aside off heat. Let it cool down to room temp so we can roll out our pastry and bake that in. We'll come back when this cools down. So we went ahead and we moved our uh, pie crust filling to, or a pot pie filling to a uh, plate just so it cools down faster. In the meantime, we're gonna roll out the pie crust we made earlier. We're gonna need extra flour, just to, so it doesn't stick. Sprinkle a little bit on top. We're just gonna kinda like push it in. Again, very similar to a uh, apple pie crust. If you see cracks, just beat it into submission. It'll eventually form the way you want. So down the middle, forward, pick up and turn. You wanna keep this moving constantly. There we go. It'll even it out. If you see cracks, just beat them in. Pick it up and turn. 
Same old step. Okay. We're gonna pick it up, turn. Need any cracks you see, roll it out. We want this to be relatively thin, but not too thin. There we go. We're gonna do one more pick up and turn. Now it's getting pretty big. There we go. And you can see all of the butter smashed into that pie crust that we did with the apple pie. I would say you probably want maybe quarter to an inch. You could probably go thinner if you wanted. The thinner you go, the quicker it will cook in the oven, but then again, you don't want too thin. So that is well more than enough for that. So we're gonna do what we did last time. We're gonna take our rolling pin, use it to pick it up nice and easy. I love that. There's nothing more satisfying to that than that. Then we're gonna roll it back out over our pie tin. A little uneven, but that's okay, because we're gonna pick it up and move it back. Perfect. Remember, don't squish it in. Pick it up and move it. Pick it up and ease it into the crevices, because this thing is going to shrink. You wanna make sure that you have even coverage. So now that that's good, I need some kind of knife here. Oh, pack knife, that'll work. We're gonna cut the edge out. And the rest of this pie crust, don't throw it away. We're gonna use it as a cover. Perfect. Coming out really nice. This is a pretty good pie crust recipe. I like it. We go all the way around. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. Come on. This we're gonna re-roll, put it back in the fridge. This is gonna be our pie topping. Now we're gonna fold it in on its edge here, make a lip. We're gonna do a crimp. There we go. We're gonna put, pinch, and squeeze. Make nice crimping. Make it look decorative. Make it look nice. Awesome. This is gonna go back into the fridge to remainder to chill while we wait for our filling to cool down, relax a little bit. This is also going to chill back into the fridge. So we're gonna rewrap it because we're gonna re-roll it out. We wanna make sure everything stays nice and cold because this is butter we're working with. All right. All righty. So our pie crust filling is chilled out enough. We're gonna roll out the top of our pie here. We're just making a disc nice and thin to fit the one of the base that we've already made. So again, we're gonna roll, turn from the middle, pull it out, turn, apply more flour to our um, rolling pin as necessary. We're gonna roll, there we go. Turn, roll, and turn. We wanna make sure that the top part's pretty thin and flat especially because this is a pretty thick piece of pie crust here. I probably doubled the recipe where I shouldn't have. That's okay. There we go. Again, we want to work fast because we don't want to get this to get too hot because then the butter melts because we're doing all everything in one shot right now. There we go. There we go. A little more pie crust, as you can see. It'll dry up pretty quick. Come on, baby. Nope. Thank you. You see any cracks? Just beat the bag. There we go. All right, that should be pretty good. Oh no. Hold on. Beat the middle. There we go. That'll be fine. Like a gymnast. We get our. All right. Crust here. We're going to get. We're gonna get this. We're going to fill our pie up with it. Don't be afraid. Fill it all the way as much as you can. There we go. It's still a little warm, but it should be okay because we're going to put it right in the oven. There we go. 
Beautiful. Love to see that. We're gonna take this. Perfect. We're gonna wrap it right on top. Fill up any cracks that you see, no big deal. We're going to take our paring knife and cut off the excess. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. We're just going to crimp against the other parts that we've already crimped. There we go. Perfect. Alrighty. Make it look pretty. Grab the edges, pinch them down with your thumb. Everything stays cohesive and together. Perfect. Awesome. Now what we're going to do is normally we would cut a vent, which we kind of already have here. It's a little ugly, but that's okay. But we'll cut one just in case. You need a steam vent or the whole thing will kind of explode in a weird way that you wouldn't really understand, but it will happen because it's happened to me a lot. We got our brush. We got an egg wash, one egg yolk with some water. We're just going to brush this down. This will give it some color, some browning, give it a nice Maillard reaction. And we're going to put this in a preheated oven at 400 degrees for, we're going to start with 20 minutes. Now everything inside is already cooked, but the pie crust is not. And we cut our pie crust pretty thin, but we're going to start with 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, we'll see how it turns out. We're going to throw that on there and into our oven on the top rack. 20 minutes. Beautiful. We'll come back, see what it looks like. Hopefully it's not burned. <laughs> All right, so it's been about 20 minutes since our pot pie has been baking. We're going to go ahead and check on it. All right. There we go. As you can see, it's been golden colored. It's ready to go. We're gonna sit here and let it rest for at least 20 minutes, let all of the fluids and fats kind of settle, and then we'll cut into it. We'll be back in 20 minutes. Now that it's been about 20 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and cut into this. We're gonna do a healthy cut right down the middle. There we go. There it is. Look at that. That is a beautiful. Make sure we get all of the cuts in there. Beautiful chicken pot pie. It's like chicken soup in a pie. Beautiful. There it is. Mm. It's beautiful, salty, buttery. It's like the perfect dish you can have for a winter time. I want to thank you all for coming by, checking out this dish. Try it out yourself. Leave a comment, subscribe, try it out. It's fantastic. Thanks for stopping by and have a beer on me. I'll see you next time.